Everybody's here. Well, AJ, if if, uh, if last year was like your white belt year, was that like your your blue belt test or something? I mean, you got you got pressed a little bit tonight. I'm not a blue belt till they promote me. Right now, I'm like white belt three stripes. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think about your performance overall? I mean, uh, you know, kind of got pushed to the limit and maybe maybe got a chance to show some character in there tonight. Yeah, I, you know, I got to give props to to my opponent. He's a tough son of a gun and he's really crafty. Much more deceiving than I anticipated. But he's a black he's a dual black belt. Like I said, he's got a karate black belt and a jiu jitsu black belt. So, he, you know, props to him. He, he, he brought me to the third round. I didn't expect that. Were there moments in there where you got kind of mentally tested, where you had to dig deep and, and you know, try to turn things in your tide? I'd like to say I thought about it, but I didn't. It just <laughs> kind of instincts kicked in there. And I got to ask about the finish. I think, I mean, it looked like there were multiple submission opportunities there. What, what exactly was it? I think they called it a triangle, but what, what was the finish there? I've been waiting for this moment my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> That's called the Agas arm. That's the Agas arm? That's my patented move. I learned that from, from my jiu-jitsu professor a long time ago and just kind of made it my own. You've seen that finish in Polaris like three or four times. I actually, uh, funny enough, just shared it on my Facebook three days ago. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. So it was cool to get that, finally get that. He, it's, a, it's a bait move. So he, you go for the arm bar and uh, you trick him into falling into the triangle. All right for it. It's not really your traditional triangle. It's a it's a little bit of uh, a variation. So, but ultimately, it's basically a triangle choke, out. not like pressure on the arm or. Yeah, no, he's he's choked. He's choked out. Yeah. Did you want to do that? Oh, oh. What? Yeah, What about the thought uh, that uh, he possibly didn't tap? There's talk going around that he's maybe feeling like he didn't tap. Was there any controversy? Did you hear anything from him about that? Did and he the, say that? There's some talk, we're not sure Some yet. people on Twitter are saying that he protested, but we can't find anywhere where he protested. So we're I mean, just wondering if he went longer. Right. It, looked pretty, pretty clear. <laughs> it seemed pretty clear to you, though. You didn't feel like there was any... What did you think? It looked like he yeah, clearly yeah. tapped. We're not saying you... We're not, we're just, we weren't in there, so we're, we're we just... We were just wondering if, if, if he yeah. said anything to you about... It, it was about as tight as tight can get okay. without his head popping off. All right. Have you used that before in a uh, jiu-jitsu tournament? Yeah, uh, the last one that I can think of, it was either Brazilian Nationals or Polaris. Polaris, I, I um, caught Manoa Man with it, you know, the <laughs> MMA veteran. Mm -hmm. I think it was Polaris 5. It's my move. Beautiful. The it's called the Agas arm. Gotcha. We'll look you up get the your room. arm and you're like, oh, wait, I'm getting triangle choke. No longer an armbar. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you, AJ, the, the boxing and the striking, everyone's saying, I think a uh, commentator was even saying, all he's got to do is just do what Richard Perez was showing him, but for, for a world-class grappler to all of a sudden become a world-class striker, it's not that easy. How did you feel out there, uh, the exchanges you were having back and forth? Were you getting frustrated? It looks like you were getting picked apart a little bit, but it looks like you were staying composed. What was your thought about what was going on in that first couple rounds? Yeah, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have that, that those three rounds because it's, it's an opportunity to get some tape and, and go and, and reassess some, some mistakes that were made and, and, and do better the next time. I think that, you know, he, he's, a, he's an impressive fighter. He, uh, I, 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 tur I turned it up on him though in the third round. It took me a couple couple minutes to get warmed up, and um, now it's just back to the drawing board with with Richard, Ernie, and Randy, and, and the guys at the McDee's Academy. Um, and it's 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 always good to have this kind of experience because you can you can draw on it. You know, training is one thing, but when you you're going against the guy, and like like I said, he he's a tough guy, but. This is the fight business, so you got to keep it serious all the way up until after the fight. And it's like, hey man, thank you for the fight, because it's serious business for me. I, I can't fake that. And I, you can try, but you can't. It's as yep. real as it gets. Your, um, your last uh, post-fight um, interview, you mentioned about you need to be meaner. Yeah. Were you meaner tonight? <laughs> is this the mean? Did it look more mean? It did. I mean, did you feel like? I mean, but your your last your fight last time looked pretty mean too. I'm just saying, like. Yeah. But it, did you feel like this was the, I don't know that the mean side that had to come out for these fights? You know, uh, I think I told Amy this before. I'm a perfectionist, and it's just it's never complete. So that's a that's going to be something that will just continue to progress as as the fights go on. And I'm just looking forward to the next one. So I'm going to go back to to the academy, and you know. Nate and the guys are already giving me criticism to go forward, so it's, uh, there's a lot of things i got to go back and write down some stuff before I forget it and, and, and build on for the next one because, you know, th this is a great this is a great venue, the Forum. 
it's something special. It really is. It's it's the first we had the the mock weigh-ins and Bellator's changing the game, so I'm I'm lucky to be a part of it. I'm lucky to have all the guys here, um, and it's uh it's looking good. Just gotta work on my striking. <laughs> Do you have anyone in mind for the next one? Uh, I gotta think about it. You know, is there anybody you have in mind? Well, Chris Lencioni says when AJ Agazarm wants to fight a real fighter, give me a call. <laughs> did he win his last one? He did. How? Uh, it was a first round triangle. So you're going to put up his triangle versus my triangle? Maybe. Maybe. The Agazarm <laughs> versus the Lencioni triangle? I guess. I don't know. I, 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 like, the, I like the striker, the karate guy, because it challenges me. You know, it's uh, I, I can go in there and grapple, grapple all day, but it's like, we just stick to jujitsu if I want to do that. This was a true test. I got kicked in the head, I guess. <laughs> so, got to get through that and, and work my way around it. Get some more head movement. And um, if I told you how many times Richard's yelled at me since my last fight in this fight, you, <laughs> you wouldn't believe me. So, it's uh, a lot of work to be done. This is by, you know, certainly not the last, um, not the finished product. This is just practice. I call it practice. It's got kind of a mixed night for, for your camp. Did Avila's loss. Do that was anything in crazy. I can't believe they gave that to him. He's running away the whole fight. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that was nuts, man. But, you know, Chris is a warrior. He's uh, it's not the last you'll see of him either. So I know he's going to be coming back even hungrier. I mean, your, um, your, your team looked pretty upset after that decision was read and when they uh, walked past Press Road. Did that, that energy affect the, the locker room at all ahead of yours? Just try to stay focused. You know, we have just a, an elite uh, coaching staff that really conditions us and puts us in the right mindset and you know we saw that in my fight you know had a little tough beginning and worked through it and, and found the submission and that's what it's all about is overcoming adversity and doing what you do so I was pleased with uh, that aspect of the fight absolutely AJ you competed at heavier weights in submission can you tell us what weights you were competing at not only that but you were competing with <clears throat> guys that weighed a lot more than you so uh, 45 I think is not where you Forever in a submission. Um. Yeah, you know, and the the thing with that is that there there's there's no impact in jujitsu. There's no striking in competitive jujitsu, so it changes it a little bit. Um, but it, you know, Rich Chow called me up. He's like, "Hey, dude, I want you to face Ryan Bader." I I wouldn't blink an eye. I would do it yeah. just because I'm used to it. But the commission probably won't think you're not like. I would like it though. Yeah. You're definitely bigger and stronger than most featherweights. I would I would think. Yeah, yeah, just not not that tall. <laughs> God doesn't give wings to snakes. <laughs> last thing, last thing, you went to the Nick Diaz Academy. Jake Shields was never a really great buddy of yours. Was there any sort of a weird transition making that happen? Do you see him there? Did you speak with him before joining? Because it seems like that that might not have been the place people thought you might have ended up with Jake not being one of your favorite people. Jake's a great guy, the OG, fighter, wrestler, jiu-jitsu guy, and um, you know he. He comes strong with the Nick Diaz army, so there's no question there. Just gotta stop hanging out with some of those other weird grapplers. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Was Nick in your locker room? I know he wasn't in your quarter. Was he? Was he with you in your locker room tonight? He's always in my corner. Oh, Whether he's you. president or not, he's always here. He's always sending me texts and reminders and little hints here and there, and uh, that's that's the spirit of Nick Diaz. It's kind of looming when you, you don't see him. And, <laughs> gives you those friendly reminders right when you need them. Right, He's the OG of the OGs. So, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations, sir. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.